everyone. My name is Sister Amanda, and this is Ask Sister. So, I had a few questions about my own vocation story, how I became a sister, how I felt God was calling me, and how I recognized that and entered the convent and became a sister of the Sacred Heart. Um, so my vocation story is essentially a love story. And I grew up very much in love with the idea of being in love, um, especially of an ideal, perfect love. Somebody who out there was made to love me and who I was made to love. And not just Mr. Right, but Mr. Perfect. Um, and so I began dating quite early and made a lot of mistakes and heartbreaks and very soon realized that, you know, as fun as it was to be in a relationship with a guy and, and have that experience and, you know, share your heart, um, guys were pretty not perfect. And there was a lot about a relationship that I found disappointing and I was let down about and I'm like, this can't be what I really am longing for. You know, I knew in my heart there was something real and something that I was made for. And I really wasn't going to just settle for anything. So I, um, after graduation, I entered the workforce. I, I didn't kind of go on to more schooling. I really was interested in finding Prince Charming and living happily ever after. So I got a job as a legal secretary, so I got to like hang out with lawyers and um, you know, kind of work nine to five and that was great. I was also really into dance, so I uh, kind of opened my own dance school and uh, was teaching children dance and I was loving it. And I moved out on my own, got my apartment, got a car, got a cat, and I was like, here I am living the life and living all my dreams, fulfilling one by one all my dreams. And I was, you know, dating at the time, um, you know, had some good relationships. Yet in that relationship, there was always something lacking and something like, I like, I know I just can't give my entire life to this or to my, my entire heart. And which I always found really disappointing. <laughs> and, you know, okay, why would there be this longing in my heart if there wasn't someone out there to fulfill it? And so at the time, uh, like I grew up Catholic and our faith was always very important in our family. And yet I think like most people, um, at the beginning God is far away and he's very distant and mysterious, yet he, so I was a ha content with him kind of looking after the world and looking after the stars and making sure everything was the way it should be. But I really didn't want him too close to me or too much interfering in my own life because we most have the idea that God is going to come in and wreck my life and tell me I can't do things that I want to do. And so we have this impression that that's what he's all about is, you know, making us unhappy, <laughs> which is strange because he's made us and he knows what's going to make us happy. But of course, that's kind of we don't believe that. So uh, it was in the midst of this that one day I was driving to work and I was thinking about you know my day, what was going on. And and the thought came to me like, wow, you know, this is it like this is I'm fulfilling my dreams and I'm really enjoying this life that I've kind of you know created for myself and as soon as I thought that the next thought was but there's got to be something more this can't be it it was like the sense of disappointment in the midst of having all my dreams fulfilled um, and I began to wonder well, what what is this like that can't be and so I recognized kind of in that moment that the one thing that really was missing uh, was God, was the God that I knew in my head was out there, but who I didn't really have a relationship with. And so I began to just sort of be open to the idea that, well, well maybe that is what miss is missing in my life. And so one day on my lunch break, I snuck into the church. Uh, it was empty. And I knew, you know, as Catholics, you know, our churches have the presence of Jesus. He's there. And I knew that in my head. And I said, well, I'm just going to go there. And I just came with an openness, with a longing, with a desire just to put myself there and sort of give God a chance. Um, you know, God, if, if, if you are what is missing in my life, you know, I, I guess I want you there. <laughs> um, I just was open. And in that experience of being in the presence of the Lord with an open heart, I recognized and encountered him as someone real, someone who was passionately in love with me, 
someone who knew my mess, who knew my weaknesses, and yet still loved me enough to die on a cross for me. And what I, those things that I'd already known in my head and I could recite them to you had never really meant anything to me personally until that moment. And so I went out to that church thinking, okay, maybe this is real. Maybe this is what was lacking. And I began to pursue a relationship um, with God, uh, recognizing now it was really him pursuing me. And he was the one who put that longing in my heart and that desire. And it was him, you know, pulling, having a string around my heart, and he was just gently pulling it. And so I began to pursue that relationship, spending some time in prayer, um, reaching out to others, volunteering in different service areas. And I began to feel that emptiness filling up. So that, that emptiness that I recognized and that dissatisfaction, it was like, oh, there was something missing, and that's what it was. And so as I began to grow in this relationship and so sort of this, this God was really wooing me and courting me and drawing me, um, during one kind of moment, uh, the thought just sort of entered my head that, well, if I became a sister, I could enjoy that relationship all the time. And that freaked me out. <laughs> like, a sister, why would I want to be a sister? That is like totally giving up on everything I've been dreaming of. Like that would be total, make total no sense. And um, so of course I forgot about it for like a day. And then it just kept coming back and coming back. And I knew very little about sisters except for like they were scary people who, you know, just like to read the Bible all the time and didn't know how to laugh and couldn't find a husband. So, you know, had to end at the convent. So of course, that's not me, hello. So um, I began to read up and I actually encountered in a sort of strange way, the Sisters of the Sacred Heart. And I realized, okay, well, maybe I should just find out some more about them. So I was out west at the time. I got on a plane, I came to visit the sisters for a couple weeks, uh, way in far away Ontario. And it was the scariest two weeks of my life and yet the most enriching. And it was scary because it was something so foreign and something so strange. And at the beginning it was like, no, I cannot do this. And yet as the weeks went by, I realized um, there, I was live, I was spending time with these remarkable women who also had lives and promising futures, who had left that all behind to answer this call to be completely dedicated to Christ and to His works, and to His love. And so I began to slowly, slowly um, surrender my heart to that idea that no, God is actually calling me to do this. And as scary as it was, it took a while for me to like get to that point of accepting that because no one becomes a sister nowadays. People thought I was insane. I didn't want to tell anybody and um, <laughs> they would think, what? And I would think that of myself too, like why am I even thinking about this? And yet it just wouldn't go away. So I finally through a lot of prayer and just a lot of soul searching and just recognizing that if I don't at least try, I'm never going to um, be at peace. And so I did, I applied, I got accepted, I came out here, and honestly, I haven't looked back. Uh, of course, there's been days that are struggles, that are challenging, that, like in everyone's life, but those are the moments that make you grow and make you discover who you are and who God is and who He is in your life. And the thing about being in love or in a relationship with God, He is so immense and so uh, mysterious and so every day there's a new way of falling in love with him a new way of encountering him and that journey of falling in love just never ends it never grows stale it never um, becomes oh same old thing even though I might have the same schedule and the same routine as a sister um, the relationship and who I am and who I am in relationship with God is constantly changing and growing and expanding um, which I, I guess is what heaven is going to be like, right? Is just being in that relationship with our God who loves us in a way that we are going to spend eternity trying to understand or learning and growing in our understanding of. And so as a sister, I get to live that now. I get to begin um, now that special kind of connection and union with God and putting aside a lot of the distractions and a lot of other stuff um, so that I can pursue that and so he can pursue me. And so I also love the works that we do, the way we reach out to others, especially with children, how we can share our love of God and who we have encountered. Um, 
and we can share that with others and lead them into that same relationship with him so that they can find that satisfaction and fulfillment that a relationship with him can can give us and it's only in that relationship with him that we truly find who we are who we are meant to be who and that satisfaction and fulfillment of our hearts because that's what our hearts are made for they're made to be in a relationship with our god and of course that doesn't mean that you're all going to become sisters or priests or you know become missionaries in africa um whatever god has called you to you are going to find your fulfillment and satisfaction in that and so i really encourage everyone to just open their hearts and to pursue that relationship. Allow God to pursue you because he is pursuing you more than you will ever try to pursue him. And all it usually takes is just an openness, an openness to, okay, God, you know, what you got for me? What, who are you to me? Um, and being brave enough and courageous enough to be that open and to enter into that relationship and that encountering him. Um, so I pray for all of you who are still trying to discover your vocation, that you will have that open heart uh, and let God speak to you in the various ways that he does. For all of you who are living your vocation, I pray for you that you may live it with all your heart and uh, find your fulfillment and your satisfaction in that, in living what God has called you to. And I ask you also to pray for those who are still discovering their vocation and for all of us who are living our vocation uh, that we may become holy we may become the saints that God has called us to be so thanks so much for watching um, if we're united in prayer we're united in this kingdom of God that we're all pursuing him where he is pursuing us and we all find each other in heaven and so we can spend all of eternity rejoicing in his love for us thanks so much for watching God bless you